Hey, you guys. Happy Wednesday. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Maybe you're watching live or perhaps you are going to be watching once I put this up on YouTube, which by the way, if you're not following me on YouTube, I do have a channel and it's actually where I post a lot of the videos that I do here because a lot of people have reached out and said that they don't have social media and they'd like to learn a little bit more. So you can go to YouTube and find me. Just look up Season Johnson and it shouldn't be too hard to find. I don't think there's a lot of Season Johnsons. But anyways, good morning. I missed you guys last week. We took a family vacation. Um, we ended up deciding on a Tuesday and leaving on a Wednesday to just go to Mexico and have some family time and some warm weather because we live in the Pacific Northwest where it has been cold and rainy and we needed a little break. So thank you guys for your grace. Missed you last week. I'm excited today. So I want to ask a question before we get started while people are joining. My question for you, and I know some of you may not love to move your body, you may not love exercise, but if you had to choose one way to move your body, what would it be? Like what's something you love doing, um, or I should say that you like, maybe some of you don't love it, but that you like to do. I'd love to hear your thoughts or your ideas, what it is that you do to move your body every day. It's always fun to hear because I had somebody, I was having a conversation with somebody at a conference I was at recently and she told me that she rollerblades. And I was like, what? I thought people stopped rollerblading like in the 90s. That is amazing. She totally rollerblades and she's in great shape. Um, Catherine, hi Catherine. So Catherine likes to swim. That's awesome. Kelly likes to run. That's cool. I like to run. Not every day. Um, yeah, swimming is, swimming is such a good workout. And those swimmers have really strong, strong shoulders. Uh, my medicine is a balance of yoga and kickboxing. Awesome. Ooh, that's good. Um, my best friend, Diana, um, she drug me to kickboxing when we were in college, and I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I would. In fact, we went to a Billy Blanks. Does anybody remember Billy Blanks? Because I used to do his videos, and her and I went to a Billy Blanks class in LA one time. We thought we were pretty cool. Veronica does dancing, rollerblading. See, another rollerblader. You guys, I am like missing out. I had no idea it was a thing still. That is really cool. Well, keep them coming. I love hearing what you guys are doing to move your body. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, just for those of you who are new here, my name is Susan Johnson, and I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner. I'm also the founder of the Kick Cancer Movement, and I'm a presidential diamond with doTERRA essential oils. So basically, I really feel like my calling here on earth is to educate and empower people on how to live their healthiest life. But I do want you to know that I don't have it all together. In fact, I would be the first to admit that I probably am learning more every day about health and wellness, and there's areas that I still struggle in. So just because I'm educating you doesn't mean that I have it all perfectly. But there are certainly some things that I have found that work really well, and one of them is my morning routine. So if this is something of interest to you, go ahead and share it. I, would, I encourage you to share it. It can hopefully help benefit somebody else. Um, and Michelle, hopefully this will give you some ideas. Michelle just shared she has a double mis she had a double mastectomy, and she needs some more movement ideas. So that's really important. Hopefully what I share with you is going to be something you can do. So I do want to say that just growing up, we kind of we were raised fairly healthy. We were also raised to be to move our body. We were all my sister and I were both in sports. Um, but I'm going to also tell you, this is t confession time. I am the worst, the worst at being consistent with real good exercise. And I was actually just having a, a call with one of my good friends and business partners. And we literally just five minutes before this, you guys, we established accountability for each other. We're going to check in every morning to tell, I'm going to tell her what my workout goals are for the day. And we're going to check in at night or check out at night, letting her know if I accomplished it or not. So again, I, I hope that this is speaking to you that you know I'm not perfect at this, but I have found something that does work. So this is something that I'm gonna share with you. This is something that I am doing consistently, and it's been really easy for me to be consistent with, and I think part of it is because it is easy, but it's made a difference in my body. So as we get older, I'm 37, I believe. Don't quote me on that, I'm really bad at math. Um, but I'm 37, and as I've gotten older, my body's changed. And one thing I've noticed is I started to lose tone. I don't like that. I want to have toned abs. I want to have toned arms. I want to feel strength. I want to feel strong. And so, and yes, having a baby, my gosh, having children completely changes your body as well. 
So when I started implementing this workout routine, don't worry, I'm going to tell you what it is in just a moment. And there's a few other pieces that go with it. I started to see major change in my body, but I also started to see strength. I felt stronger and I felt better. So for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that morning routine is one of the most important things that I can do for myself, spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, from a perspective of being an entrepreneur. It, I have to feed my soul in the morning. The way I do that is I actually have a pretty lengthy, it's all over an hour morning routine. And for those of you on Facebook, I did link my blog post that walks you through my morning routine in detail. So you can read that. For those of you on Instagram, you can find my morning routine blog post, seasonjohnson.com. In the search button, just type in morning routine or morning power hour, and you're going to find the details. So I do walk through a really lengthy morning routine. Wake up. First thing I do is I walk out to the kitchen and I take some minerals and my probiotic. PB Assist from doTERRA is what I take for a probiotic. Then I heat up. This is going to surprise some of you. For those of you who've been following me for a while, when I say this, will you give me like a thumbs up so that I know that I have some people who aren't judging me? Um, the next step is I warm up my coffee enema concentrate. I do a coffee enema most days of the week. This is something that I do to cleanse my liver and to be proactive at supporting my adrenals as well as my hormones also clears my skin, and it's one of the most powerful detox methods you can do. So then I do my coffee enema, and during that time, I'm listening to a sermon. I just love to have time with Jesus and to be filled by a really inspiring message from the Bible. So I listen to a sermon. When I'm done with that, I come out and I sit down. Um, I just have some time in the Bible. I spend some time in prayer. And I just take a little bit, probably 15 minutes of just solitude. And that's hard for me to do to the point, you guys, that I actually set a timer on my phone. So I set a timer on my phone for that period of time. I set a timer for 15 minutes. And that's the time that I come out and I'm reading the Bible and I'm spending time in prayer. And I set a timer because I'm like a squirrel. And it's really hard for me to sit still. And it's a discipline. It's something that I've had to become, to practice and to become disciplined at. So once that's done, at this point then I go back into my, um, my bedroom and I have a yoga mat and my rebounder there. So this is where I implement the workout routine that I do. So right at this point then I find a podcast because I always, there is time for silence. So don't get me wrong. I do feel like we need to be in a space of quiet often, but I also like to fill space when I am not preoccupied with learning. I always want to be learning and figuring out how I be, can become the best version of myself, how I can serve others in the best, to the best capacity. So I find a podcast that I listen to, and I've usually picked out the podcast the night before, so I don't waste my time scrolling mindlessly through the podcast list. So I put a podcast on that's usually about 30 minutes, and I start with an hour, a minute plank, not an hour. You guys would kill me if I said an hour plank. I start with a minute plank. So I put my timer on my phone, laying on my yoga mat, and I do a plank for a minute. Timer beeps, and I do a little bit of a sun salutation. For those of you who know yoga, you do some downward dog, upward dog, some stretches, and that probably the sun salutation lasts me for maybe four minutes, five minutes. Then I do 25 push-ups. Now, when I started, I was doing girl push-ups. Nothing wrong with girl push-ups, but I do 25 real push-ups, and then I do a total of 200 sit-ups, and I do different types of sit-ups. Um, I am gonna do a blog post about this because I've had people send me messages asking like, well, what are the sit-ups, what do you do? So I'll write it all out for you um, in a blog post, hopefully in the next couple weeks. But I do about 200 sit-ups, then I do another 25 push-ups, and I'm gonna be honest with you, that second set of 25 push-ups is typically girl push-ups because by then I'm feeling a little bit tired. Then I do another minute plank, and then I do about 100 lunges. So I do different types of lunges. I do three, um, or I do four sets of 20 different types of lunges. Then I'm done with that part. I get on my rebounder, and I rebound for 10 minutes. So again, I set my timer. And I bounce up and down, rebounding for 10 minutes. And this whole time, remember, I'm listening to a podcast. The time is actually flying by. I'm challenging myself, but it's not crazy intense. I get barely sweaty. So it's not like this crazy intense workout, which is why I was sharing with you earlier. I do feel that my body 
needs a little bit more. And that's where I, I struggle with accountability of really getting outside. I love to run, but I gotta just get myself out the door, right? So for me, this morning routine has been huge. But let me tell you one of the, the most powerful aspects of it, excuse me, where I did start to see even more dramatic change. And this was mostly in inflammation and I would say probably my abs. So my husband and I during the week, most weekdays we do intermittent fasting and we're not consuming any alcohol during the weekdays. And I say most because not every, I mean, like, let's see, Monday night, we almost put an offer on a house here in Bend and we're, we were like, well, let's, let's have a glass of wine to celebrate. We went out to dinner. So that was a Monday night. But for the most part during the week, we don't have alcohol and we finish dinner by 6 p.m. So we're all done eating by 6 p.m. I have some tea later in the evening and we go to bed by nine. We're early bed people. We rise. We don't eat again until usually 11 o'clock. So 10 or 11 a.m. So what we're doing, it's called intermittent fasting. It's very, the, the way we do it, you guys, is so simple. Some people do it way more intense, but for us, this works. And I know that I can't set myself up for total deprivation because I'll just throw the towel in. <laughs> so when we are, we're feasting for 12 hours, I'm sorry, feasting for 12, fasting for 16. Is that right? Did I do the math? No. Feasting for eight, fasting for 16. Sorry, I told you guys. Let me just take a moment to, to recognize the fact that I really meant it when I said I was terrible at math. So feasting for eight hours and we fast for 16. This is what I, when I started to see even more inflammation leave my body and my abs and my stomach look and feel really strong and flat. So for me, the combination of this morning workout routine, which doesn't take me longer than 20 minutes, and intermittent fasting during the week has been a game changer. And also, as I tell you guys all the time, your diet, your nutrition is foundational to all of this. So I can't promise you that this routine would work well if you're still eating junk, but I can promise you that every little step helps. In fact, I was talking to somebody earlier and I said, remember just one step each day, it compounds. And in a month, you're gonna be so much healthier and so much more disciplined than you were before. So I'm gonna give you some marching orders from this, some, just some takeaways. My takeaways would be a challenge for you. And the challenge is that tonight before you go to bed, that you try to do your best version of push-ups and sit-ups before you go to bed. And I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you how many because everybody's at a different place. We have somebody that shared she just had a double mastectomy. So sit-ups might not be something she could do. She might not even be able to do push-ups. So I want you to do something before you go to bed that is building strength in your body. Maybe it's lunges. Maybe you try to do a plank. So whatever it is, I want you to move your body, do something before bed tonight. So you could do it now, but you could do it right before bed. But try it, because I think if once you start, habits are much easier to build and to create when you do it one time right? You got to do it that one time. And I'll leave you with this. There was a, a comment that was actually made at church on Sunday that really stuck with me. And I thought it was so, such a powerful illustration. So what he said was that restriction brings rest. And I had to think about it for a minute. I thought, okay, restriction brings rest. What, what does that mean? And he explained it like this. He said, my toddler, my, he has a baby, my baby is crazy, like just an ungodly amount of energy and just crazy all the time. And we were going on a walk and he wouldn't come down. So we got the front pack and I put him in the front pack and I cinched him up really good and he fell asleep. And he said, for kids, sometimes they don't know their boundaries, so we have to bring them into restriction. And for babies, oftentimes they do, they fall asleep when they're restricted and they're close to you, they, they fall asleep and they rest. For adults, that looks a little bit different. So for you, what is, it, what is something that you fought restricting yourself from that you know that if you did restrict yourself from that, that it would bring you rest? Interesting concept, right? And that's how I look at Jesus. I look at Jesus as not this person giving me laws and rules and sitting there like this, 
hoping that I do everything right. I look at Jesus as offering this place of rest. And that when he tells us things that we should and shouldn't do, it's just simply because he knows that restriction can bring us rest, whether it's rest to our souls, rest to our spirit, rest to our physical body or our emotional state. And I know when we talk about exercise and we talk about health, oftentimes it feels restrictive. It feels like I have to restrict that for myself. And I don't want you to look at it that way. I want you to look at it as the idea that if you do take that discipline and you do restrict that, it could bring you rest. So I hope that helps. I hope it was inspiring. Next week, we'll be sharing a different topic. And stay tuned to the blog because I will post the details of that morning routine. I'll update it just so it has a little bit more information for you guys. I hope you all have an amazing, beautiful day. And I'll see you next weekend.